What's up, everybody? Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well on this Friday. We have made it to the end of yet another week. We are on the verge of getting some more playoff action, and it's time for another head coaching candidate profile, another resume, as it were. And this is going to be another one of the short ones. Just going to say that right now. This one's going to be over quick because this guy has not been around that long. This guy is a few years older than I am. Uh, this guy, I remember when he was a player. I remember when he was a draft prospect. I remember him in the NFL as a very lackluster quarterback. We're talking about Mike Kafka here, and th this is going to be over quick, so don't blink. But he cannot be ignored because, number one, the Seahawks have already requested an interview with him. And number two... He's another Andy Reid guy, and those Andy Reid guys, unless you're Eric Bieniemy, I guess, you're eventually going to get your shot. And we might be the team that uh, Mike Kafka gets a shot with because there seems to be at least a little bit of interest. Um, you guys might remember this guy as somebody that we considered as an offensive coordinator three years ago um, when we fired Brian Schottenheimer and eventually ended up with Shane Waldron. Kafka was one of the guys who was likely considered for the role, and a lot of people really wanted him at that time. Now the question is, three years later, do we want him as a head coach? Because um, I don't think it would be too hard to get Kafka away from the Giants and just get him to make a lateral move as your offensive coordinator, but that's not necessarily the way we've started this, right? We have started from the standing of... What about this guy as an offense, as, excuse me, a head coach? So let's uh, go over whatever little bit we have to go over with Kafka. Uh, the last two years are the years where he had a chance to really prove himself, and it didn't really happen, right? He was away from Andy Reid. He was under Brian DeBowl in, uh, or excuse me, DeBowl in uh, New York. And he didn't have a lot to work with. He had some good pieces on the offensive line in 2022. And that's about it. Like, Daniel Jones is... I don't think he's bad, but I don't really think he's good either. He's never really had good receivers. He had Darren Waller for this most recent year, and that's almost it. Um, he had Saquon, who I'm not even a big fan of. So he didn't really have a ton to work with. And in fairness... I don't think he did an awful job with what he was given there. Now, 2023 was awful, but, I mean, what, what do you expect to happen? Offensive linemen are getting hurt left and right. The receivers aren't breaking out or getting better. Daniel Jones starts out the season poorly, then he gets hurt. You're dealing with Tommy DeVito for part of the season. It's going to be bad. But, yeah, it was bad. 15.6 points a game, 30th in the league, 30th in EPA per play. Really, really bad. So that's currently the most recent mark on his resume. So it's no wonder this guy isn't exactly an exciting head coach, but I really want to point to 2022 when he took a Giants offense with Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, and Andrew Thomas, and really not much else, right? Really not that much else. They didn't have receivers. They didn't have much of a tight end. They didn't have any other great offensive linemen, really. Evan Neal was a rookie, and he didn't look very good. Um, they, they, that was obviously before they got John Michael Schmitz. Uh, he was a rookie this most recent season. Um, this was before even a guy like a Jalen Hyatt got there. They were working with, uh, what, what's the guy's name? Um, uh, Sterling Shepard a little bit. Is he still there? Uh, they've got the, um, the guy who drops every pass, um, Darius Slayton. It's a motley crew that he managed to help get to the 15th ranked offense, 21 and a half points a game. And better than that, they were top 10 in EPA per play, 0 .034 per play. So that was actually a good offense, and Daybowl obviously gets most of the credit for it in New York because he's the head coach, and he's the guy who was kind of the Josh Allen whisperer. But at the same time, you got to give Kafka some credit for his work as an offensive coordinator here. So I don't think this Giants tenure is all bad. I think that if you came to Seattle, you get a better quarterback in Geno Smith. You'd have probably better running backs because at least they're always playing or most of the time playing. 
uh, in a way that Saquon isn't, you'd have probably a better offensive line. Even though our offensive line isn't very good, it's better than the Giants and infinitely better receivers. So I'm um, not um, too down on what Kafka did as a Giant. I'll put it that way. And before his tenure as a Giant these last two years, he was with the Kansas City Chiefs, and that resume is very, very simple. Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes, more Pat Mahomes, and a little bit more Pat Mahomes. Um, he came onto the staff in 2017, which was the year the Kansas City Chiefs drafted Mahomes. Alex Smith started most of that year, but um, he proceeded to work his way up the ranks in that coaching staff um, with each year that went by, basically, um, and oversaw some great stuff. <coughs> Again, I don't know if you really want to say that Mike Kafka is responsible for Patrick Mahomes. That seems a little silly. And I don't know if you want to say that he's responsible for what Andy Reid's doing. That seems very silly. But under his watch, the Kansas City offense was great. The um, last two years he was there, 2020-2021, which was, what, a Super Bowl loss and an AFC Championship game loss. He was the quarterback coach and passing game coordinator for one of the most prolific passing attacks in the league and one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Mahomes, putting up elite numbers both those years. Uh, the two years before that, which was the AFC title loss and then the Super Bowl win, uh, he was the quarterback coach for Mahomes. Um, and over Was the quarterback coach during Mahomes' MV, first MVP season, 50 touchdowns, 5,100 passing yards. Some of the most phenomenal quarterback play we've seen in a while. And then the next year, when they actually won the Super Bowl, he was the quarterback coach. And remember, Mahomes actually missed a little bit of time that season, 2019, and Chad Henney came in and played well. So he was the quarterback coach for that guy as well, worth noting. And his first year in Kansas City, he was the offensive quality control coach. And, I mean, the offense was quality, mostly with Alex Smith. They were sixth in points and fourth in EPA per play. So, I mean, he was doing his job, I suppose. Again, I'm not going to sit here and act like he's the architect when we all know that Andy Reid is the architect, but Kafka touched some really positive things. Honestly, the first time Kafka's been involved in something bad would be 2023, and I don't know how much we can blame him for there. He's working with Tommy Cutlets. He's working with a terrible offensive line that can't stay healthy. He's working with no-name receivers that can't get out of their own way. I think any offensive coordinator would be bad in this situation. So really, the resume is great. It's just extremely short, and it's also done with the understanding that he benefits tremendously from his situation. Most people would look good when their entire career is spent around the likes of Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Nevertheless, I don't mind this idea at all. This is kind of your home run swing. This is where you're trying to go, look, we're going to try to get this guy before he becomes a super hot commodity. Because if he goes somewhere this year as a coordinator and has a good year, everybody's going to want him next year. You might not be able to get him. And if he's actually good at head coaching, it's going to be off to the races maybe for the next two decades, like Sean McVay is right now. Now, there's a very high probability of failure with Kafka, but if you fail, you're going to fail big time and at least get a top pick, right? That's kind of the way I'm looking at it, and I'm not against that. So, Mike Kafka, sure, why not? All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks. More videos coming later today.